in the bag today, we're going to take a look in my golf bag. I've changed a few of my irons, and I know you guys are always quite interested in what's in our bags. I'm here with Coach Lockie. Hello, hello. All right, Matthew, he's running the machine. So I'm going to hit some shots with a series of irons and hybrids to show you why. It's like I'm very specifically fitting each club, I feel. Yeah, you definitely, especially at the top part, lots of hybrids, longer, or chunkier irons up there, isn't there? Yeah, and there's real reasons, right, which we'll hopefully show you in this. And I think it's something maybe when people are thinking about getting clubs and thinking about getting, you know, their best iron sets and their best bag of clubs, um, maybe the focus is still too heavily on sets of clubs. I think the world's got better at getting down, like getting four and five irons or four and three and four irons a bit out of bags, but I still see plenty. And there's always a lot of wedges in people's bags. Yeah, there. which is, yeah. Like I've got two wedges or specialist wedges and I don't feel like I ever miss out on not being able to hit a shot. So do you need that many in there? Mm, it should be a fun one. I agree, that's a good question, Matthew. Before this video gets started, Cleveland are giving you a chance to win one of their RTX Zipcore wedges. If you want to be in with a chance of winning this wedge, first of all, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That's the important one. And secondly, why don't we try and get this video to 5,000 likes? So hit that thumbs up button. If it gets to 5,000 likes, we'll be giving you a chance to win one of the new RTX Zipcore wedges. Mark tells me they're pretty good too. And I think that leads us on to the video quite nicely. Let's see what he's got in his bag, shall we? So I'm gonna start with my wedges. Uh, 58 is kind of where my wedge game starts. So I've got Cleveland RTX zip core wedges. I've got the dark finish in the 58, and then I've also got a 52. Not in the dark finish. In the standard finish, yes, absolutely. I'm a 10 mid bounce out on both of them. So I don't mind a bit of extra bounce on my 58 because then I'm bunker playing it as well. So I have been 08s and stuff before. Yeah, I think I'm 08. Um, but with the relief on the back of this club on the 58, I still feel like I can do plenty of stuff. Like I've been doing a few slap the base wedge shots with this club, even off a carpet. Ooh. And it, it's it's fine. There's enough relief if you because it's in the heel. You see, you get it in the heel, and I can still play. Slap the base. Slap the base. If you haven't ah. seen that video, maybe go on my Instagram. Yes, <laughs> I was even wrote a song for it yesterday. <laughs> so I've gone. I used to be four wedges. I've now gone to two stroke three, which we'll talk about the last one at the end of the video, maybe because it's kind of in my bag, but I don't really see it as in my bag. And then I go to a pitching wedge. So Strixon Z Forge. So I go basically just to the standard Z Forge. Black bladed pitching wedge. So again, for me, where I kind of agree with you, and as you told me I should do this really, when I was looking at, when I was changing clubs, when I went to Strixon first, I also don't, have not found that I've got any gaps. Yeah, not, um, not missing any shots or anything like that. No. Being able to manipulate them is not really that hard with a wedge, is and, it? Yeah, and by taking out a wedge has allowed me to really kind of tailor my bag around, I think, the key scoring area. Lots yeah. of people think it's here. This is obviously important but that kind of 180 to 220, which is where so many people down the lens do struggle to score, me included. You know, I'm from those distances, I'm averaging probably over three shots to get down each time. So any club in there that allows that average to sneak down is a huge win compared to maybe what's happening down here. Right, so let's talk to you about my iron set. I'm gonna start with a nine iron. The nine iron as well is the Z Forge. So it's the bladed blends perfectly with my wedge. With a nine iron, I've got plenty of loft. It's a shorter handle, obviously shorter club. Again, with this club, I feel I can hit the number I need it to hit. It goes as far as I need it to go, blending with the others, which you're gonna see on these numbers. Did that hit the line? Oh. I feel I can hit it high and low. I can feel I can max out with spin because it's not like chunky bladey and I can also take spin off as well if I need to. So again, the nine iron is so blended in with the wedges. I feel that I can do everything I need to with a nine iron. Now post comments down below, let me know. What do you feel with your nine irons? I don't get many people coming in for lessons going, really need help with my nine iron. Like it's almost like people can do what they need when you give them this amount of loft. Yeah. All I need this to do is look and sound the way I want it to do and blend into wedge and then what goes above it, which it does in the Z Forged. Now this is where the journey to hybrid golf begins. Eight iron. Eight iron, I am now ZX7. So I've gone to like a cavity, mid forged cavity. You were a blade before? Before the eight iron would have been Z Forged. 
That's interesting because I would probably, if I was gapping, keep a blade. Yeah, and I, I, to be honest with you... I don't think it would make much difference either. Well, uh, I, it, I don't think it makes any difference. Yeah. I'll tell you the difference it makes. So if I, if I look at both of these, the difference is they're both slim and they blend. If you look at the numbers, so off the face, feel, spin, sound, distance, I feel like this eight iron is going to perform exactly the same within a few revs as the bladed one. So why change? Because it's the journey to the long end of the Yeah, bag. where it gets brutalized quite quick. So if I don't start stepping it early, you have a gap, a massive gap in look, sound, feel. So I'm literally doing this not for, so like if, if I had to buy this eight iron to replace the other iron, I would never have done it. Yeah. But if I was buying a new set of clubs, I would choose or start wanting to know how this performs compared to my blades. Does that, so if you're watching this video out there using a bladed eight iron and then you jump to a really cavity back, it's not, don't go and buy a new club unless you've got the money. Like, it's not that important. I have the option, new sets of clubs. You have the option if you've got the chance of buying a new set of clubs. There's people out there today buying a new set of clubs. What I'm saying is this is something that maybe you should start considering. So it's for me, it's the journey of starting to blend up to that kind of cavity to then hybrid part of my bag where I'm really strengthening. Because what I will say with your bag as well is that you're not afraid to go with the less good looking club if it's going to help performance. Whereas I'm very much, oh, I love a blade. Let's keep it set, blade all throughout my set and then go to the hybrids. But you're never scared to just put that ugly one in. Totally, you? it's, my bag for me has always been for one purpose. Like, do you care when you get a hammer out of the drawer at home, do you care what it looks like? You just want it to do the job. You just you? want it to have a handle, be heavy enough to nail that hammer in, surely. And I see golf clubs like that. There are some specific looks that would put me off, but if you can prove to me that that club will help me score better, like to vanity over that for anyone who wants to get better at golf is just crazy. But we know they're out there. Like, oh, you're yeah. saying, like yeah, I know, yeah. like, yeah. Online, the world of is out there. Like, yeah. When we get to the top end of my bag, I think you'll see the real cliches that people just, oh, I don't know, they want to hit a free iron. I don't get what you want to hit. Do you want to be better or do you just want to yeah. look like something? So, seven iron, I jump again. So, I'm the ZX5. So, again, when I put it down compared to the eight, next to no jump in this end, mm -hmm. and it blends or if barely jumps in offsets and top lines and those kind of things with the bladed up to this. But again, the launches then stroke distance to max distance are just gonna blend where I need them to catch up with that top end. If I stay here in blade, I reckon you would see, well, we'll I mean, I reckon you'll see like two to five yards difference. So it's tiny, but it's two to five yards difference stepping up Again, chasing that 200 yards, 180 to 220 kind of range. So I go chunkier. This is basically that little bit chunkier, but it doesn't look it from where I'm looking. But it will deliver a spin, launch, distance that is blending, and like I say, and stepping up to that higher end. And it's the sound and feel like as well with this. This is still very forged. This is blending in sand and feel very much still with my bottom end. Oh, get on that line. Does that make sense? So this hasn't gone into hybrid sounding. Yeah, because I, I, that part of my set, the middle part, I would want to be feeling like the wedges and stuff. Yeah. You don't want it to be loud and tingy, do you? I want this to connect with my top end of my bag in performance, yeah. but I want it to connect more with the bottom end of my bag, sound, feel, looks. Because yeah. I'm right on my transition now. So now, in theory, I should go ZX5, so the chunkier of the two, and again, the looks from this end, it blends with my seven iron, in a six iron, okay? And if I hit a few of this, what I find is it absolutely fits in with my seven iron beautifully. A bit of a toey pole, but it fits in there numbers-wise with my seven iron, like, on point. Yeah. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't allow me to get anywhere near my hybrid. So you can't 
get an extra 10 yards, for instance. Correct. So, and if I do, then the strikes that I can go so short on miss hits because you get like the low heely or low toe or a high one even that just literally does nothing through the air. So this six iron could easily be in my bag. And you could go six iron here and then jump to a seven iron, um, jump to a five iron in this yeah. and then get to my hybrid. That gap gets bridged. But then the trouble I find is that when I have to put a five iron in the bag, I just never use it. Yeah. Which is yeah. because it just launches a bit low. You put me in a bit of semi rough, bit of rough. I, I'm just not launching it high enough because the loft's getting at my kind of peak now for the design of the iron. The situation has to be perfect. And I was just always going to my hybrid, as you saw when we played, like just always was going. I started it in soft hybrids from such ridiculous places to get land angles and launch. I was just thinking, why that five iron's just becoming obsolete. And that's like quite impressive as well. Like you're a skilled golfer with quite a bit of swing speed. Yeah, I know. And there's a lot worse golfers out there playing fives and four irons. Like, it's questionable, isn't it? Well, massively. So what I've done, and people know this in my game, is so I go launch a six iron. Cleveland launcher. So I go now, I jump to blend hybrid. I'm fully hybrid blending, but I'm length of an iron, steel shaft. So I get the kind of weight and feel of everything blending with my seven iron. It doesn't just jump straight away to a different club. But what happens with this club? I'm gonna hit two sets of shots with this. I'm gonna hit just like normal, nice six irons. And what happens is it shapes the way I want it to shape. It sounds obviously a bit tingier now. Yeah. But we start in 172 carries. It just moves up from my seven iron to where I want that distance to be. It's like a 180 club really as a kind of almost an average if I'm hitting it just nicely. But then what happens, so there's two just nice trying to hit a distance. I can then push this up to run into my next hybrid. So this is now where you really start to see my bag, I think come into its own of fitting each club individually to the other ones. If I just went pitching wedge to five iron, even with some blends with those, you know, the ZX fives and sevens to the forge, I still see performance gaps in situation because this club allows me to hit this shot. I feel comfortable with hybrids. I feel skilled enough with hybrids. Like it's one of my favorite clubs. So me going at this club feels much more natural like a hybrid and I start being able to get, oh, go on, oh nine iron directions. Yeah, like we do joke about your hybrids being like wedges and you're basically setting your bag up like a set of wedges yeah. at that yeah. end, aren't you? I, I'm basically full <laughs> wedging between six iron yeah. and three wood, yeah. almost. So then I've gone to a 22 degree in the Strixon ZX hybrid. And to be honest with you, I swapped this out without even testing it. It just looked where I want it to be. It does, yeah. It's 22 degrees, so I know the number's gonna do what it does. We'll show you the numbers now. Like, don't not get fit for hybrids. It's something that people are not fit enough for. It's just, I've hit hybrids enough to know exactly what I can do with this one. And you know, it looks the way I want it to look. It's not really much of a huge change to what I was gaming. So with this club, I can hit it normal. And I'm gonna get near like 200 yards in the air, so I'll work around that. But then I can bring it back to my six iron. So basically, again, if you think about it, if you've got a, f a 60 degree wedge, a 56 degree wedge, a 52 degree wedge and a pitching wedge, you're, I presume, got them because you're like crashing them into each other. You know, there's my soft 50 that I could have played my 56 there, but I wanted to go in lower. You're crashing them all in. Yeah. I'm doing that up this end yeah so you're hitting like a hard six iron that might go a bit drawy and then this club if you want it to drop back to your six irons probably going to be a bit more of a fadey sort of shape well let's look at the numbers so what we're we looking at there matt so this is your nine eight and seven irons to start off with and you can see here that your carry gradually goes up nicely one three three with your nine one four four with your eight and one six two with your seven yeah spin drops off about a thousand on each club launch angle goes down about a degree on each club as well. Yeah, and the ball speed's changing accordingly as well, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, they're blending lovely, aren't they? Now, these are my averages, the thing that I would advise you to do as well when you're looking at clubs. So, 
I will hit a seven iron from 170 because I know if I flat out, I'm about a 172 carry with a seven iron. But I also know I could hit a seven iron about 144 to 150 through the air as well. So I find my average, but I also look at my top and bottom end as well. And then that really gives you that kind of idea of what clubs you can score with and not, I always think helps you in certain situations doesn't it yeah and dispersion of those i'm gonna aim them all pretty much in the same spot i'm taking dead aim within reason that's what i would tell you to do like look at the circles they're all sort of left and right similar your average is pretty much on the line with all three yeah like so I, and i would place. seven eight nine you know if i'm not taking dead aim with them yeah. with how i want to play then i would be asking some serious questions so let's go to the higher bunching numbers so we've now got six iron all the way through to my 22. unfortunately the um, the 22 degrees gone in a slightly different place for some reason, but we've got the six at the top, which is 173. So that's like my standard six, nice six, which I would always play like 170 to 185 in my head. And then you've got your launcher six, so the chunkier six, which is 172, so same yardage. Yeah, and that's, again, that's my launcher being played just nice and but the spin is slightly different here so four seven for the normal six iron and then five three for the chunkier launcher six iron which is really interesting isn't it that the chunkier one is actually spinning more that would be counterintuitive and that's one of the things with the launchers that i always found if you look at my reviews going back years with the launchers i was shocked at how the spin maintained on such a chunky iron and that was like five years ago when I first tested them. And then your launch a six iron where you said about your second shot where you try and get it up to your hybrid it's 182 so 10 yards further so you can definitely manipulate that club and make it go a bit further. And that's where with the six iron I don't feel that I can get that consistently up there. I you get, start to miss strike. Yeah I start to miss strike a bit and then I do get like one that I'm trying to get up to like 190 like if you're thinking that's 182 average through the air like i'm pretty sure there'd be one in there traveling at 185 186 through the air which is easily going to run to the 190 on the green where the six iron it's like one out of 20 is going to do that for me yeah it's, it's just percentages why again, would isn't i it? take like, that gamble yeah why are you playing the le less percentage shot or yeah. club basically so it's definitely a club that i would put in for you instead and which you obviously have and then we go up to your 22 degree we've got a normal 22 and a soft 22 soft 22 coming in at 190 so again pushing back towards where that six hybrid is yeah they i'm trying to crash them a bit yeah yeah and then the normal 22 going at 204 so you can see the difference there where you're really trying to bring that back and make it fit in with that hybrid six iron shafts on my irons for the shaftoids it's the ns pro yeah modus yeah stiff just i had that i mean i honestly didn't that's what apparently they are yeah <laughs> and then in the um, six iron launcher, because it's just ripped from the set, it's a dynamic gold. What? You can't have two different shafts so in I don't your know clubs? That, I don't know how that works. I bet your wedges are different too, aren't they? No, not my wedges, but I'm like, they're all, oh, dynamic gold. <laughs> Spin wedge. So I then go to a 19 degree hybrid ZX. Again, it's the blend. Yeah. You know, it's the same club, just a different loft. So like, I'm gonna be, you know, I don't, it's purely distance is making me choose what I hit there. Um, and again, the 19, I can hit hard and soft, which is kind of topping out about 125, uh, sorry, 225. And I can bring it down to 200 as well if I need to. Don't want a uh, five wood? No, like because I don't, I always people, feel, with, yeah, I always feel with a five wood that A, I, I can hit this low if I want, I can punch this. I don't feel comfortable punching a chunky wood. I would definitely say that a 19 hybrid and a five wood, like the length's slightly different, isn't it? Yeah, so it's shorter in this, longer in five wood. More you control. You custom that. Yeah, I do. And again, it's the blend I like, because my next club after the 19, and I've really fallen in love with this club, and this is the beauty of taking a wedge out. This one comes in, I've got a 16 degree hybrid. This crashes into my free wood. So I'm now trying to get this, I can't bring this down. This is hard to bring down to the 19. 16 degrees off the deck with, with this, I just, I, I reckon I can with a bit of practice, not naturally. I've not practiced enough bringing this down. I feel like I want to hit this out flat 
flight. I feel like this club is basically like that six iron, isn't it? Yeah. It's like at your max, like your speed's not quite quick enough to then be able to manipulate it like you want to. And that's where you start to struggle possibly. Yeah, and this is the Halo. So this is the Cleveland Launcher Halo 2. And what I like with this club is I can hit if I try and get one, so that's quite a nice flat flight. So that's two, three, one through the air, mm -hmm. spinning at two, six. That's driver spin. Yeah. So this is really something, it's a really confident three wood for me. And I like my three wood, but I'm finding myself hitting this off tee and off the ground so much more than my uh, fairway wood. I just turned that one, unfortunately, a bit toey. That's two, two, two for the air. One nine spin. I don't want to miss it in it. I'm Toe, yeah. turning it over. But again, for me, that's why I feel like I can't hit this soft. I can't. I don't feel like I want to float this because I feel more I want to get that one, even though I don't want that one. I want it out there. And the trouble is, if you go these lofts in a fairway wood, I just get them ballooning up. Yeah. So it's this is like a one iron. And I would say that this is probably better out of a bit of a skanky lie whereas a free oh, wood yeah. again like yeah it's going to be hard for you to control and even launch like this is a better option isn't it yeah so this crashes that's 225 i think carry yeah. totaling at 240 yeah 223 so this now the 16 degree hybrid runs into my free wood free wood i'll hit from the deck and a t this one is like i'm 260 out and i want to try and get it as far as i can because i'm maxing at like 240 carry with this so this is a 14, it says 15 on it, but it's actually 14 degree fairway wood and that's 244. There's the little drift right as well. Yeah. So uh, this is where knowing your clubs as well and aiming in the right spots, you're on the fairway and you've got a free wood in your hand, I want you aiming up the left. Yeah, that absolutely. Power hybrid, maybe aiming up, up the right. Yeah, and that's what I do. Got it turning. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the launcher, turbo launcher free wood that I game. It's a stock, fixed neck, but it's actually, I got them to get it down to 14 rather than 15. I don't know if they just measured and found a 14 degree one. Right, yeah. Or they moved yeah. it. I didn't ask. I've measured it's it. It's 14. 14. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. And then driver, I'm properly mixed. I'm settled a bit at the moment on the um, Zexio. It's a 48 gram shaft, AX1. Different again. 40. <laughs> It's a 47, sorry, 47 gram shaft, counterbalance. And I do just peak speed with this. Two, three miles an hour, isn't it? It's constantly two, three, because I'm really tempted to put the ZX5 driver in, the new Shrix, and when I tested them, I did really like it. And I got them to put a 50 gram shaft in that. But again, it's not counterbalanced, so I might experiment a bit with asking them if they can get something like this in it. I, don't, I just, somebody says, I don't think it'll beat this, it'll just match it. So like, you kind of think, what's the point apart from, I just really like the look of it. It was very interesting when I was with the team Shrixen guys last week, the spread of sevens to fives, they were telling me on the PGA Tour, because when I reviewed it, I thought everyone would use the seven. But it's actually really, really yeah. spread, which uh, did surprise me. I thought they would all go for that classic tour look. So the Zexia I'm happy with, I'm hitting fairways, and if I am warm and swinging, <laughs> oh, a bit of a necky one, unfortunately, but, that's a 272 carry. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? And, and you're, you're also liking it because it's got a bit more loft and you're trying to draw it, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, well, it's not. It's actually 8.5. Launch is higher. Yeah, it does launch higher, and I've got no problem launching it. Well, see, my club head speed there's 113, <whistles> which for me is like, you know. Getting up there, yeah. bruh. Getting up there. So 113 for me is like a proper victory. Because, I mean, you'll see videos from me swinging these at 104. So I reckon I've raised five to 10 miles an hour at the minute. Yeah. But not every shot is a problem. I can still swing this 108 if I'm not, you know, I've just hit lots of shots, really. So, yeah, there's actually a driver I'm happy with. And it is, I, I mean, we've tested it a lot against loads of other clubs. It does consistently come out the longest. Because I am able to react. See, that's... 276 with lower ball speed because it's a lower loft 111 to launch and like the strike and launch conditions increase on that even though the speed dropped down but for me to get the other drivers at that speed it's hard putter front line Cle uh, cleveland 4.0 
One of the most talked about clubs that I changed, because obviously Scotty is such a massive, and I had a custom shop which was such a massive thing, I think, in people's heads. Even my dad was like, why are you getting on with a putter? I think I've, I've noticed no difference. I like the weight of this putter, I like the grip. I've gone for a chunky, very square, and I like the dark into the dark with hardly any lines on it. Yeah. It just does. Classic blade look. Yes, I mean, this is just the shape that I always gravitate to. One last club. Probably got a different shaft in it. Oh, dynamic goal, 115. That's not the shaft I gain. So I've got a 64 degree full face. I really like the look of the full face. I will be honest with you. I'm tempted to make the others all because I was with Team Strix the other day and they were testing wedges with the Torpros and they had the full face in different lots. All oh, right, okay. And I was looking at them and I was thinking, oh, they do look good. I like the shape of them. So the 64 is in there because I'm allowed it to be in there because I've got 13 clubs. And no more gaps. So I would just put a 64 in and we've had a situation at Burnham in a, in a bunker where I actually played it. It was the right club. There was like, it was, I was completely short sided, really steep, uh, steep bunker on a down slope. So I literally just lay this flat and hit it as hard as I could. I didn't hold the putt, but I hit it within probably 10 foot, five foot, like you wouldn't do like So if I've got a, a gap, I've got an extra club, I just think I might as well just keep carrying it. I do have to be careful that I don't pick it up though. It's so tempting just to hit it. Yeah. You could whack silly. a left-handed club in there. Yeah. Because <laughs> you'll probably use that just as much as that thing. <laughs> <laughs> My left-handed swing has improved as well. It's good as well, as well. yeah, it's good, yeah. We've got a left-handed club. So we could take the 56 out, or the 64, sorry, and we could change swinging. It uh, could just be like a bum swing every time we film, couldn't we? <laughs> Stand in the normal place. Oh, yeah. Like, that's faster, that's isn't it? That's a good strike, too. Rip that, we should have bring the machine Like, you over. had one against a fence in yeah. thingy, wherever that was. Yeah, wherever we Spain, went. Spain, I think. Because I've been doing my speed training, you do right and left-handed swings. My left-handed swing has got faster. Listen to that swish. Did you hear the swish? <laughs> in my bag. What's in your bag? Post in the comments. It'd be so interesting to hear. I think there are huge gains if you start focusing in the areas that you're losing shots. Everyone I collect stats with, they're losing shots. Par fours, par threes, par fives. Par fours, par fives, always big losses. Par threes, even like 11 handicappers can play them not bad because they'll have a few seven irons, nine irons, and then a full shot. But par fours, par fives, where people are obviously hitting a long club for their second. 200 yards in second and things like that. They're just losing shots. And my bag is wedge heavy from 180 to 220 because it's a scoring. It's something for me is not the longest here. I'm going to have those shots into holes and they need to be functioning launches, land angles from semi rough, those kind of things. Comments down below. How much in your fittings do you focus on each club being fit? Because I think this is where it's going. Each club being fit is massive. And then how much do you focus on just hitting seven irons like I've hit there, seven iron left handed? Like if I was fitting this club left-handed, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing there very easily. So um, I'd love to hear. It's a massive place where you could make gains, I think.